Hey guys, this is Vic from Drop Spotlight. We're here with the Latina superhero herself, Caden Phoenix. How are you doing today, Caden? Hello, thank you so much for having me on. I'm very excited. Thank you. Oh, no problem, no problem. I know WonderCon is going to be huge this coming weekend, and you with your project, it's, it's going to be huge. Very, very huge. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. It's our first WonderCon, so I'm very, very, I'm just very appreciative. They invited me. They found me on social media as well. And I'm also doing a panel, a Rise of the Latin Mr. Brio panel. Um, they asked me to pitch. And so I was like, okay. And then they said, pitch more than one. And I was like, okay. And so I pitched two, and of course they picked one. But like, <laughs> uh, it's very, very just amazing. Um, I'm just very humbled and grateful. Like, it's, it's going, right? Because I'm fairly new into this whole world, into the comic industry. So I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm very much looking forward to it. Oh, that's, that's great to hear. Not only that, but a panel. That's, that's cool. That's, that's very cool right there. We'll, we'll make sure to check it out as well. Thank you. So I was, I was wondering, how did you get into the comic industry as well as how did uh, Latina superheroes come about? Uh, it's kind of at the same point and, and really the reason why I started doing comics. So I come from the film industry. I'm more of a writer, uh, very independent, but more of a writer in features. Uh, I just like feature films, so movies. And so when I was thinking like, okay, what can I write and what do I want to see on the big screen? Because then I can write it, right? And this is when we had big screens. And so I was just like, I want to see a Latina superhero, right? Because I've never seen one. And so I was like, okay, to increase my chances, I'm going to create five Latino superheroes because then I have a bigger chance that one of them will get on the big screen. And that was kind of my mentality. And so I was like, okay. So I, saw, I shot a short, short film, like a little sizzle of Jalisco. Uh, and it's like a little three minutes, but something to show her powers. And then I started showing people and I wrote out the feature length script as well so I can pitch it. And I started showing people and everybody asked me for the comic. They're like, oh, this is great. Where's the comic book? Where's the comic? And I was like, no, no comic, you know, cause I'm not comic. And I told so many people no. And then I finally hit me like, that's a good idea. I should probably make a comic. You know, like it's like <laughs> obvious. Uh, it took me enough notes so that I can figure that out. And so then I was like, okay. So I researched comic versus graphic novel, you know, which would make more sense for me as a business person. So I chose graphic novel. And then I just translated, I researched how to write a comic, how to, you know, all this, what you need on the artist and et cetera. And then I just did it. And that's how I started. That's how I started the whole, like, okay, here's the five superheroes. Why not make them a team, right? It's just kind of all formed naturally, which is really nice. Cause that's not what I set off to do. Like, I still want to make them into features, that for sure. I still want TV series animated. You know, I want all that. I want the dolls because I love little Barbie dolls, you know, but that's me. Uh, but it's just, it's an adventure and it's a very fun adventure. And I'm lucky I have really great artists that make the work come alive uh, because they're very, like, aesthetically, they're very pleasing when you just look at them themselves. And then the story, you know, takes you into another world. But it's still, it's just the bigger picture. And that's kind of where I started. That's why I'm going. It's the Latina superhero. It's the representation, you know, in front and behind the page, you know, in front and behind camera. It is very much what I'm about. That is so <laughs> unbelievable. Like, wow. Like, I know you're, you you did a little short film on it. Now it uh, tra transitioned to a comic book. And now with uh, a numerous of characters, that, that's awesome. Thank you. Very, very cool. So I was wondering, how did you come up with the, the character's background? Like, I know each character is different. How did you envision each character would be doing? Well, this was back when I was like, okay, I'll create my five superheroes, right? So that I can get a bigger chance for the on screen. And so I just started listing them in my head. I was like, who's cool, right? And like, for the first one was, who's your superhero growing up? My mom. What did my mom do? She danced lo cuerico. And so I made a superhero that dances lo cuerico. Like, that one was the easiest. It was like in a minute. I was like, okay, that's fine. And I just added blades at the end of her skirt, you know, at the end of her skirt. So then like so she can slice or she'll go like that and they shoot out as well. Whoa. Or she can deflect bullets, right? Because it's, it's flocorico, so it's a big dress and it's pretty. And so that was like, that was a very visually, like that was a very easy one. It was my mom, it's still my mom to me. Um, so that was, that's Jalisco. The other ones I was like, okay, what do I know? And what sets them separately, like slightly apart? Like I'm not, you know, I'm not building a new wheel. I'm really not, but like, I, they don't need to fly. That's like all DC characters, you know, like I, they don't need to do certain things, but it's just something slightly different. Like Santa has divine strength, but I set her in Texas. Why? Because I grew up going to Texas. My dad used to live in Texas. So I understand El Paso, you know, within reason I understand El Paso. So hers is Wexo, a made up border town in Texas, uh, you know, and then I just, with her, she's divine strength because her name's Santa. So, she, you know, saint. 
So same thing. She's like a brawler. She's like the Hulk in a certain ways. She doesn't transform or turn green, but she has she has strength. She has unlimited strength. She has divine strength, and you can't kill her spirit. That's her thing that she discovers. Ruka is my instant karma. She's my chola. She's the next one that comes out after Lokita, and that's it. East LA. Same thing. I just think of locations to separate <laughs> them, and then like, okay, what what are we known for? What do we, you know, what is, you know, what's necessary? Hers is a stereotype, but I'm taking it. Like we're not, you know. We're not cholas, but we get the stereotype. Sure. You know, everyone loves Chicana culture. I'll take it. I'll use it. That's, you know, why not? That is her strength. Uh, my Dominican is gunslinger is New York. And she's my gunslinger. Like she's a cowgirl, you know, because I grew up watching Westerns because my grandpa, you know, so certain things about me, that's not necessarily me. None of them are me at all. Loquita supernatural because I grew up with lots and lots of little scary ghost tales from my grandparents and my mom. Like they love telling scary stories and like scaring me when I was a little kid. And so like, I know little ghost stories. And so Loquita fights ghosts or she saves ghosts, but she fights demons. Uh, she sees the supernatural. So they're all little, little tangents, I guess is the best way of saying it. Of, I don't wanna say of me, but just enough of what I know that's interesting to me. And they're all very distinct from each other. So they can always play off each other. And that's kind of how I set it up. And I forgot your question, but that's kind of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you answered that. that was perfect. Like you put so much into it for each character and a piece of you and your family, or not only just yourself, like a trait, but like something that you live through or you been through and you put that in there. Like, I, was, I was like, whoa, this is really cool. Cause like, there's so much people envision that they want, but they never use what they already have. Mm -hmm. And you do it. That's, that's cool. That's very, very neat. Because uh, many of us, like, we don't, we envision of being something bigger and grander, but we never appreciate our heritage and our culture. And you exemplify. That's that's awesome, man. I'm very interested. Check out your comics later on. My fans most likely would be interested as well. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, they're very grounded. Same thing. Like, they're not necessarily gods and they're not, I mean, they're not aliens. So they don't have unlimited power, right? Like, those always have the most power is, like, Superman or kept America, or I'm sorry, Captain Marvel. You know, like it's just they're they're grounded because the social justice, like their issues that they go after, are very grounded as well. So that was the, that came after after I thought of my five superheroes. I was like, okay, what are they fighting? Femicide. What are they fighting? Trafficking. What are they fighting? Domestic violence. Right? Because that's very grounded, real life stuff that we're fighting. Uh, females are fighting more so. You know, and so like, who gives us our justice? Nobody. But I can have Latino superheroes give them justice. You know, within a fictionalized world. And shed some light on it and so that's kind of that was the, my thought process i'm like okay what are you going to write what are, what are they going to do besides have their origin story you know and their their coming of age their arc but it was just like okay what's important to me femicide very important to me so that was jalisco same thing she was the easiest one because that's just jalisco my grandma's the chihuahua that's mujeres de juarez my other grandma's the jalisco you know and so that's that goes back to my family i just put everybody together everyone's names in that book is a family member of mine as well so that's for me that's a little bonus for myself um like Adela she's the mentor like she's the last living Adelita that's my grandma's name is literally Adela um so except for Jalisco that's nobody's name but otherwise all the rest of them are um so that's just a bonus that's that's just me having fun you know nodding uh, nodding to my family as well that's that's cool that's really really cool like like wow <laughs> that's, that's amazing what you have done right there and also implementing all your family even the names that's that's really cool it, it brings more of a personal touch to it absolutely yes it does awesome i know you had discussed earlier that you wanted like the, like the merchandise for like the, for the children the latino superhero like your old latina superhero barbie what what else that you have in mind not only to educate them like what's going out there as well but something where Maybe one day they could be that person that stops the traffic and they stop the, or that person that stops that other situation that's going on. Yeah, so I also want to make costumes. That's something that I got asked for already after Jalisco came out. Um, a couple people, like a little girl and like an adult, uh, just as Jalisco for Halloween. And it was so amazing. They asked me, people like messaged on Instagram, asked me if I made costumes and I don't. <laughs> I don't make <laughs> costumes either, but it's something in the future that I absolutely do want. Cause same thing that like, why not dress up as a hero? Because you are a hero, you know? And, and that's just the mentality. Like white guys get that. You can literally pick any superhero and you can be like, oh, I'm already him. 
right? You're like, yeah, the figure, but you're literally dressed as it, right? Like think of cosplayers, but like a little girl dressing up, like that's me, you know, like, and that's my mom. Like that's literally our heritage or our culture, you know, like I can do that dance because that's my heritage, you know, like, and that's just amazing in itself. Just it invigorates people. And that's kind of what I want. That is also the, you know, another purpose for the books besides I just want the world, but it doesn't like, it's just, you know, why not give hope is always my thing. Exactly, you know, that's, that's, that's really cool, you know, just, just giving the hope, just giving them the ideas, the dreams, like, no, like, like, she's done this, she brought this character, I want to be that character, I want to stop this, I want to live out these things that we all see around us, the stories that our families passed down for generations and generations, that's, yeah. and being there for Halloween, that's, that's, that's awesome, that's, that's like a stamp of awesome right there. Yes, I agree. So going back to the comic series, oh, before fan jumps in there, what do you want them to know prior to jumping in there? Like, it, what kind of adventure you, you want them to know? Um, it's universal. You don't have to be Latina. You don't have to be female. You don't have to be literally anything. It is a universal story. They just happen to be Latina. They happen to be Latina within different heritages, right? Like I have a Dominican, I have a Cuban, I have Chicana, of course, I have a Mexicana. Mm -hmm. Um, so just, it's not necessarily, if, it's for everyone is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just a fun adventure. It's not, it's not a here, let me preach this left and right to you. Like they are social justice. They are dark issues, dark tones. Um, I'm more DC because people die, you know, but that's life. People die. Uh, you know, I'm not Marvel and just cut away. I don't do that, <laughs> but it's, which is fine, but not in these books because we die. Literally females die left and right. That's literally the truth of it, you know? And so like here you could actually see us die in real life, but here's the heart and here's the character, the superhero that's going to save them at the same time. So just that, I mean, I, I appreciate just everyone looking at it. And I also appreciate the pros and cons. I, I like feedback either way, honestly. Awesome right there. Uh, you're creating a universe for for not only for the for young females, young girls, but also for others to to look into like they've never seen before, knowing these stories. So that's really cool, really neat. It's it's gonna bring fans into seeing a variety of things that they never seen before. Comic fans, that's something that they are itching for just because it's not hasn't been done before. Absolutely. Unfortunately, I'm niche. Like I don't. It's not. It's good for me, but it's also not good, like, in the bigger sense, because why am I niche? Like, there should be a million Latino superheroes, you know, and there are a couple. I'm not the only one, but there are other ones as well. But, like, why aren't we mainstream, you know? That's um, and that's kind of, that's part of the problem. Well, most likely you could probably break that door down, kick it down, <laughs> hi-ya, blast, blast a demon here and there, and just have some fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and lastly, where can our fans find your comments and uh, online as well as uh, uh, keep in touch with you as well so online i am at latinasuperheroes.com so it has a breakdown each page is each one of the superheroes so you can get a little bit of information and pictures and um the artist bios if you want on latinasuperheroes.com all one word and then the instagram is the same thing it's latina superheroes awesome thank you so much kaden for this interview yeah. guys and gals come check out this comic series check out each comic indulge and get your creativity going because you're going to your imagination is going to fly wild guys mm -hmm. yes this is vic from drop spotlight we'll see you at the cons <laughs>